Justin Stone here from EliteBaseball.tv, and a lot more has gone noticed about launch angles, exit velocities, and the path of the bat going through the strike zone. But just like 10 years ago, when everybody was so concerned about being in the zone by being inside the ball and getting extension, the focus was on that, so much is made of the bat-ball collision. Well, with launch angles, and then thus exit velocities, and what how we should match each of them up, we're talking again about the ball-bat collision. So what ends up happening is coaches try to manipulate that moment in time. And just like the dreaded rollover, and players not staying inside the ball and through the ball through extension, these things, these mishaps, are occurring well earlier in the swing sequence. So what I'm showing you today is a player that came into us extremely steep in his angle to the baseball. Therefore, the bat was in the zone for a very short amount of time. And like most hitters, when they're steep into the zone, they don't get on plane to the ball till well out in front of their front hip. So pull side power was something he was able to do to get the ball up in the air. But basically anything else, he was beating straight into the ground or cutting straight up into the air because the ball was not matching his swing plane because of the heavy descent down into the ball. What we did was not talk about angles, launch angles, and bat plane. What we did was make sure his body was in a more efficient sequence, and thus the angles improved. The videos here today aren't to show you, oh, here, look what I did with a hitter. They're simply to show you that how to fix the proper bat angle through the zone and matching pitch plane has a lot more to do with the body than it does the bat itself. So we're going to show you the previous swing that this player had. He's a Division I player, high-end program before a transfer. The first thing that we have here is, is a little bit of an overload, and that was his first issue. The overload caused him to have to push out much harder from the backside to get the pressure of the leg back inside the instep of the shoe. With this push, like most hitters do, it gets tougher to control the body momentum forward. Thus, players often get forward of center and into their front side. This is the first issue when it comes to bat plane. Very often, most hitters that get into their front leg now lose the spring of their rear hip in the stretch up through the back side of the body. Although his hands are back, and you could say his scap would be resisting, because the hip is no longer as loaded on the back side, the stretch doesn't continue up the body. So now the player is hitting with forward momentum. And now as the hip turns forward into the front leg, it's really the front leg that is controlling this movement. So what you have with players that get heavy into their front side and break forward of center is often a steep descent angle into the baseball. And when I show you this angle right now, all players tend to have a downward move before they get on plane to the ball. So this isn't uncommon. The issue with this player is the push of the hands into the front side was still continuing well into his body line. So you can see how the bat is still dramatically coming downhill. I'll put some frames on it here so we can see that descent of the bat. And we're really talking here into the zone of still being, and I'm going to put an angle on it for you, wrong angle. Almost 20 degree, 27 degrees downhill at this point. If I put it here a little further into the zone, it was about 15 degrees, which is extremely steep. That's a, the wrong attack angle we want to the ball. At this point of the swing, we want the bat to be on the upward ascent into the ball. And generally, that's going to be you know 6 to 8 degrees on a fastball in the contact zone. And if we get further out in front, the lift portion of the swing, it's going to be dramatically higher than that. But it gives the player a chance to attack from underneath the ball and gives them more chances for solid contact, not to mention better bat speed. So players that get heavy into their front side, as you see like this, are also getting the ball deeper into the zone. Those balls are flared off to the first base dugout. They're cutting the ball. They can't really do anything in terms of getting the ball up in the air with backspin unless it's out in front and to the pull side. So what did we do to fix this hitter? Well, the first thing we had to do was get him into the ground and maintain ground force and connection with his back leg. By doing so, we kept the rear hip loaded. And when we start to launch from the rear hip, the cue I use here is I want the hip turn to put my foot down, to weight the front leg. I don't want to land and then turn. Land and then turn. So that's turning into the front leg. But when I can turn from the rear hip, 
and the rear hip is weighting my front side. Now we have a hip that's turning under a resisting scapula. The scapula will now fold down. So look at the change in the angle of the shoulder just because of this kinetic movement. The transfer of energy from the lower body to the upper body because of a resisting scap and him launching from the back side is allowing him to turn his torso underneath the ball. And now we're creating an angle. He's still staying inside his back shoe, which is a tight descent into the ball, but getting on plane much sooner to the pitch. And the upward flight now of the barrel as it enters the zone and comes through. You'll see it direct, keeping or drawing against that line that I'm showing. So now we have a player that is, when we're using the diamond kinetics, that was right in the zone that he should be, in inside the contact zone. We were going to be 6, 8 degrees, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 as he continued to climb through the finish of the swing. This is what you would see matching up with your better hitters in big league baseball. But that angle of his shoulders, that torso angle, was a lot easier to create because he was launching from the back hip. Now, it's not to say you can't manipulate that. You can, but it just it's not as efficient, nor are you going to create the same bat speed. And you can see the difference in the shoulder line, how steep his shoulders are, almost turning level to the ground right here on a pitch that's a little more into lower into the zone still. So that's not how we're going to get on plane successfully without just cutting that baseball. So it goes back to the teach. Get them in sequence. Keep them in their backside longer. Resist in the upper body to create core tension. And then you're going to get a hip that's turning under and a scap that's folding over, creating good torso angle and lift naturally to the ball. Where now we're creating the correct launch angle by getting the body correct versus trying to manipulate launch angle and trying to fix the swing at the end of the swing while the previous steps are broken. Come check us out at EliteBaseball.tv, and you too can fix the swing by getting on our sequential hitting plan or working one-on-one -on -one with me. Until next time, this is Justin Stone with EliteBaseball.tv.